Normally when I ride the Forest of Dean, I start with a lap on the Verdurers Trail to get warmed up. I then tackle the long push-up track to the downhill trails a couple of times. And then I finish the day as I started with a big fat coffee. Perfect. But today I'm deviating from the normal plan. I'm meeting up with a few reprobates and we want to ride some downhill laps without the faff of the push-up track. So today we're on the uplift. The uplift is a great way to maximise your time on the bike without wasting precious energy climbing back up to the top. Not that I shy away from big climbs, but on days like today, it's nice to be chauffeured around the forest. At the beginning of any Forest of Dean downhill session, it would be rude not to start with the classic countdown into launchpad trail combo. So let's go. If you're looking for fast and flowy, these two are trails for you. As you can see, the pine needles and slippery leaves are out in force today, so we're going to have to keep our wits about us. Fun fact, out of the four of us, only one of us managed to not crash their bike today, but can you guess who? Whenever I ride the downhill trails, I use Countdown and Launchpad as the perfect warm-up. I always start the day a little rusty, so it takes me a couple of runs to get into the swing of things, but I'm looking forward to an exciting day's ride. You can see why this trail is one of the most popular trails here. Even though it doesn't have any huge features like drops or big jumps, it's a really active trail. It's filled with low consequence features that are great for building confidence. Because this trail is so accessible, it's a really popular line with most visitors to the Forest of Dean. It runs from the top of the hill to about the halfway point where it meets the launch pad trail. Because it's completely rollable, it's a good introduction to downhill trails if you haven't ridden one before. But for the more experienced rider, there are a few extra features that you'll spot along the way. Riding a trail like this first thing is also a good idea to make sure your bike is dialed in for the day and that everything's working properly. After riding Countdown to half height, we dropped straight into Launch Pad. Again, this is a great trail for pretty much anyone. Everything on here is completely rollable, but the trail is steeper and definitely faster than Countdown. The features on Launchpad flow together really nicely. Despite it being an easy trail, it really is one of my favourites here. It also works really well on a hardtail. Interestingly, this trail is also wide enough for adaptive bikes, so it really is for everyone. Honestly, what's not to like? If like me you're someone who needs to work on their cornering, this is a good place to start. All the berms are solid and they're great to ride at speed. Perfect for practice. Now, I haven't ridden this trail in a while. In fact, the last time I think I was here was a group ride back in summer. But before that, it was about a year ago when this trail was first reopened. Since the grand reopening, I'm happy to see that the trail has worn in really well and it doesn't look like it's suffering because it does get high volumes of traffic. Hats off to the trail builders and the Dean volunteers for this one. As you can see, we're riding in classic UK winter conditions. It's been raining for a few days now and the trails are a bit on the sloppy side. Trails like Countdown and Launchpad can be ridden all year round. Heading back up on the uplift, we found out that not all the trails are as rideable in winter conditions. Back up here, the next trail we wanted to ride is called Ski Run. This one starts with a few progressive tabletop jumps that are great fun to play on. I've enjoyed riding these in the past, but it appears that today wasn't going to be my day. Although the first few jumps went well, I landed on the knuckle of the last one, casing it massively. Perhaps it's a condition today, or who knows what, but have you ever had one of those days where the riding's awesome, but you're riding like garbage? Making small mistakes, not sticking to your line, clipping obstacles, or just missing features. Well, that was me today. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that earlier on during today's ride, this happened. <laughs> this left me with a pretty beaten up shoulder and a couple of bruises, and probably didn't do too much for my confidence either. So all this made Ski Run an interesting encounter. I mean, I did manage to stay on two wheels this time, but unfortunately I didn't manage to clear the last of the tabletops. Something that I had no problem doing last time I was here. A poor start and not a great confidence booster. It can be frustrating when you're not riding at your best, especially on great trails like this. But luckily for me, Ski Run is a trail that runs from the top to the bottom of the hill, the whole length. This means there are plenty of features that I can redeem myself on especially muddy turns, a few small drops, roots, and a steep roll onto the fire road. The back end properly slid out then. The second part of ski run is my favorite part. It gets steeper and a bit more technical, especially in the wet conditions. 
Dropping down through the ledges of rock and roots, this feels more like a natural trail that you would see outside of a trail centre. It actually reminds me of a lot of the off-piece lines I used to ride back down in Devon. As you can see, it was really slippery in places, especially when the leads got involved. Not to mention the huge muddy puddles. <laughs> this is so wet. When I'm not casing jumps and slipping in mud, this is one of my favorite trails here. But as we made our way towards the bottom of the trail, we took a little detour onto the skills area. Ooh, skills area. Now this place can be great fun. It has two separate lines where you can practice your drops or your jumps. This is a brilliant place to visit in the morning so you can get warmed up before hitting the downhill trails. Perhaps that's what I should have done. But after playing in the skills park for a little bit, we got the uplift back up to the top to ride another trail. And this one is called Sheep Skull. I've ridden this one a number of times in previous years and it's a trail I've come to enjoy. Again, the last time I rode this was back in the summer, but today's conditions are definitely going to be different. This trail changes massively between summer and winter. Like many of the trails here in the Forest of Dean, Sheep Skull is a natural trail. I find these great to ride in the summer, but they can suffer a bit in the winter. But to be honest, that's half the fun. Riding slippery corners and wet routes is great training. Working hard in the winter means that you'll be a better rider when the glorious summer returns. Again, this is a trail of two halves, with the upper part being a flatter. But don't be fooled into thinking that it's easy. It's filled with loads of challenges like roots and rocks and roots and... Did I mention the roots? Because there are a lot of roots. This section is notorious, especially in the wet. Over the course of the day, we rode this section a few times. Each time I tried to take a different route, being very aware that I'm still using my old worn out pair of summer tires. Not ideal, but luckily my perseverance paid off and I made it successfully down each time. Dropping into the lower part of Sheep Skull, it's similar to the upper part in terms of the mud and the slippery leaves, except it's on much deeper terrain. The trail surface is a mixture of mud, rocks and roots, but with all the fallen leaves, in some places you can't really see what you're riding on. Ooh. My theory was just to set my speed and try and take things as relaxed as possible. The Sheep Skull lower section has some tight corners and some hidden drops to play on. This is my kind of trail. It's natural, which means that things can move and change as you go. This can add a whole new element of line choice into the mix. You have to quickly process what's on the trail in front of you, which is great practice for when you're riding outside of a trail centre. It's been a long time since I rode here at the Forest of Dean, and I really can't wait until I can come back. There are a few more trails here that we didn't get to ride today because they were closed for maintenance, so I'm looking forward to hitting those next time. So, despite my terrible riding, it was an awesome day spent on great trails with great people. In total, we only had three crashes and no broken bones. I'll take those results. So, thanks for watching this week. Remember to subscribe like mad, hit the like button, and don't forget to leave a comment. P.S. Joe was the only one who managed not to crash today. Nice work. I'll see you all next time.